Hi guys, this is Mr. Vandergriff, and I want to start this lesson out with this engagement piece. So if you would go ahead and look at this picture, and I want you to write down in your science notebook some observations, something that you're wondering about, maybe some questions that you might have. So go ahead and take a look at this picture and tell me what you notice or what you wonder or what you're thinking. Go ahead and pause the video and do that right now. Okay, hopefully you pause the video. And um, you probably noticed some skyscrapers in the distance back here and some larger buildings here. And some of you might have started noticing that these little wooden towers, there's one tower here, there's a tower here. So let me count one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four, twenty four, twenty five towers. What are these? Maybe you're asking. Well, this is actually um, a picture of New York City. And on the top of apartment buildings that are taller than six floors in New York City, there are these water towers, up to 10,000 gallon water towers that are wooden and they've got metal rings to hold the wood together and retain the water. In New York City, there is up to 17,000 water towers on the top of buildings. Now in this one, some architectures, architects hide it quite well. There's a water tower in here uh, some put a wall around it and then just the pops, the top pops off right here. And then some just have the whole water tank um, exposed as you can see right here in this one. When you start looking at pictures of New York City, you'll start to see the towers again. Here's a water tower and then the water tank is on top. You can kind of get a size, get a size here. I think this one's about 8,000 square, I'm sorry, 8,000 gallon tank. This is the Empire State Building, and then in the uh, foreground, you can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten towers. Uh, World Trade Center, one, the new trade center that replaced the Twin Towers that was built. And you can see that in the, back, uh, the background here, and you can see all of these towers. They're everywhere in New York City, and a lot of people don't notice these. They're wood, and then they have these metal rings around it, and they have a, a roof on top to keep uh, out pollutants and rain and things like that. But how does a water tank work, and, and why do they need them? Well, if you take a look here, this is where New York, where the reservoir of they're getting their water from, and it's coming down into the city. And so the elevation is about six stories high. So any building that is six stories high the, the water coming down and gravity pulling down, there's enough water pressure to push it up to that sixth floor or into this home here. But if a apartment building or an office building is higher than six floors, it's going to need a water tower so that it can maintain water pressure and then demand. So for instance, while New Yorkers are sleeping, the pump is pumping water to the top and filling the water tank. Then when everyone gets up in the morning, turns on the faucet, the shower, getting water, then everyone has the same water pressure and gravity's pulling it down and there's no problem with uh, water supply or demand. You can see here's the water tank and again, it helps provide equal distribution and water pressure throughout the building. Whereas without it, it, it cannot get the water up there past six stories. And there'll just be a little dribble here if everyone turns it on at the same time. Uh, the pumps just can't work fast enough or they're gonna have to constantly be on, which causes a lot of uh, electricity to be used. Now, if you take a closer look, here's a, here's a close up of a water tower. See if you can notice any pattern. Go ahead and pause the video and look for a pattern of the structure and function of the water tower. Go ahead and pause it and make your observations. All right, so you might notice there's metal rings, so there's slats of wood, they swell up, and then they, when they first make the water tank, 
um, actually it leaks and then when the water swells up it, it makes the joint really watertight but you've got this iron ring around here and one here and here and here but what do you notice as we get closer down to the bottom and here and here and here and here and here yeah that's right they're getting closer and closer and closer together and the way we can understand why that structure has to be that way for the function the job that it does is let's just say you take a water tower and divide it into thirds so the top third is about 500 pounds of water and so it's pushing on the sides of the wood. So that only needs one ring metal strat around it to hold the wood together. But then if you go down here, and this is an, this other third is another 500 pounds, now it's not holding 500 pounds, but it's holding 1,000 pounds of water because gravity's pulling down equally on it. And so, it, yeah, you guessed it, it's going to need two straps, metal straps around there. And then down here on the third one, that's another 500 pounds. It doesn't just 500 pounds, but it's actually going to be 1,500 pounds um, pushing on the sides here. So there's going to have to be three metal uh, straps around there to hold that together. So the water pressure is much greater at the bottom because gravity is pulling down. And you've got all the weight and the mass of this water above as well pre pressing down. So it's pretty cool. You can see that pattern. Take a look at this one. Can you see as it's getting, this is a really, really big tank. And you can see there's more and more and more uh, metal straps as you get closer to the bottom. That's pretty cool. Now, water towers uh, are found all throughout the Midwest, all through pretty much the United States, especially where there's not mountains uh, and it's really flat. So this one's in North Carolina. Uh, this one right here in Texas. A lot of times they'll put the names of the um, city on the water tower. This one's in North Dakota. This one's in Oklahoma, and most of these are anywhere from 150 to 250,000 gallons uh, of water, and they're going to not just store water, so the water's pumped up, and so in case there's an emergency and there's no electricity, then they're going to have water pressure because there's no pumps and gravity fed. Um, also, it's a nice reserve so that when everyone turns on their faucet at the same time, everyone has equal pressure. So it helps distribute pressure, water supply, and for emergencies. Uh, some get really uh, fun with them. There's a little Dixie Cup one. This one's shaped like a watermelon. Uh, and the famous ketchup box. We even have water towers in San Diego. So uh, the real famous one is in North Park. And this one holds 1.2 million gallons of water. This one was on Highland Valley Road. I was driving by checking this out. Now I do believe this is a metal tank that's been painted to look like an old wood one. And then the Flavory uh, feed store has a water tower behind it. So I went in there and talked to the owners of like, hey, when was this tower built? And they said actually it was built in 2004. 2004? Is it 2004? And they said that it's actually, there's a cell phone tower inside here. And they built the water tower around there. So it looks like a water tower, but it's um, disguising um, a cell phone tower inside there. As you can see, some of the antennas here and here. And notice there's none of those metal straps that would be for a real water tower. So that if water was in there, it wouldn't uh, push out and it would hold the wood straps together. Now, in Ramona, we mainly have water tanks because we have mountains, small mountains around, and we don't need to put them up on a tower. So as I was hiking Mount Woodson the other day, I saw this large um, tower. It doesn't look that large. But as you get closer to it, yeah, this one is 1.5 million gallons. And I did talk um, with someone at the water district, and they said, yes, in the Mount Woodson area, this is created, this is where you're getting your water from, this is where you're getting your water pressure from, and your supply. And so in the middle of the night, this is being filled up. And then when everyone uh, wakes up in the morning and they need to use the water, everyone's turning on the showers and the sink, then this is going to make sure that everyone has enough water supply and 